What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. So kind of like my duality guide that I put out a little while ago, a lot of you used it and were able to solo flawless the duality dungeon with ease. This is gonna be another guide just like that. I've sped up certain parts to try to cut it down as best I can. It was like 25 minutes. I got it down to I think like around 17-ish. So I did my best to knock it down, but it is kind of a longer guide because it's a fairly long dungeon. And I did the same thing I did with duality where I go through one full phase of everything so that it'll be easier for you to see and do this exactly how I do it you'll just rinse and repeat so as far as we go with the build we got the arc strider gamblers dodge because whenever you dodge near somebody you're gonna get your melee back that's big jump doesn't really matter I go triple jump I like it that's probably one of the best combination blow it's really the only one you could pick and what you need grenades really don't matter storm pulse whatever's good for you and then you definitely want lethal current after dodging your next melee attack has increased lunge range jolts the targets and creates a damaging aftershock damaging any jolted targets with melee attacks also blinds them you need lethal current and then also flow state because that will complement that Defeating a jolted target makes you amplified. While you are amplified, your dodge recharges quickly, you are more resilient at while dodging, and reload speed is greatly increased. So those are the two that you want for that. Now, onto the fragments. We got Spark of Ions. Defeating a jolted target creates an ionic trace. We got Spark of Shock. Your arc grenades jolt targets. Yeah, you lose 10 discipline, but it's very good, especially if you like using your grenades a lot. Spark of Resistance. Obviously, anytime you get more resistance, plus it gives you plus 10 strength and then spark of feedback taking melee damage briefly increases your outgoing melee damage on top of that it gives you plus 10 to resilience make sure you put that one on these are kind of interchangeable here and there but those are the ones i would strongly suggest going with okay now for this doesn't really matter you don't really need it but for this season it is by far the best season to ever try to go for a flawless solo and the reason I use this is just because it has proximity grenades. It's not even a good one. The stats aren't good. It's not a good roll, but it has proximity grenades, so I go with that. Then you got the Callus Mini Tool, Incandescent, best sub in the game currently for especially solar. There's just no replacing it. You know, Funnel Web is up there, but Incandescent is just insane. Then Lament, obviously. I mean, you don't even need to really explain Lament. It is by far one of the best heavies in the game. Assassin's Cowl, I really need to get a better roll. It's just crazy. But anyway, Assassin's Cowl is what this whole build revolves around. It's what my main hunter build revolves around. And it has Well of Ions on the helmet. Okay. And then you got Melee Well Maker on the, on the hands or on the grips. And the reason I do that is because every time you melee, it generates a well. And that's going to help you out a lot. Then, obviously, on the chest, Loosened Blade a biggie for any time you use lament and i have this arc resist not because i actually care if it resists arc but because i need it to equip my secondary perk on this greatly increases the charge rate for your equipped swords so it makes your charges for your strikes on lament come back way faster so you definitely want to put an arc mod on that second no matter what it is and i use arc resistance one it does resist the arc two it also only costs one energy so that's why i go with that and then on the legs, you got Elemental Charge. This is what I was talking about with Melee Wellmaker. Becoming charged with light by picking up an Elemental Well. If the Elemental Well element type matches your subclass element, you gain two stacks of charge with light. Every melee is arc, so every well is going to be arc. So every single one you do is going to generate, and you're going to be charged with light pretty much the entire time. And this is why I said this is the best season to ever do it. Both of these you don't need, but this will make it so much easier and faster. I would highly suggest this. You got weakened clear when using a grenade launcher, damaging a boss, damaging a champion, or breaking combatant shield, reload your stowed weapons, and weakens the combatant. You're going to do more damage to bosses. That's the only reason I have that. And like I said, I have proximity grenades on the grenade launcher for that fact because when i shoot it at a boss i want it to blow up next to it and, and apply that weakened effect okay and then the other one solo operative while you are the only member of your fire team you deal increased damage to all combatants obviously you're solo flawlessing you're gonna be the only member of your fire team both of these are unnecessary however this is the season to do it take full advantage of both those now because it's just so much easier and faster and less chances of making a mistake because you have to do more phases because you will do more damage with them so like i said if you see this after this season and you no longer have access to both these you can still use this guide it'll just take a little bit longer but it will still 100 work okay 
this part, like you saw, easily going in. You know, you put your melee up, you're going invisible, you're running through. You really don't have to kill a lot of these ads. They're not a threat to you. Run in, one melee, invisible, pull the lever, and keep moving. Basically go through the whole part of it and just follow each door that you open. I'm not going to show the whole phase because it takes a while, but each room you go into, it's that easy. Then when you make it to the next part, okay, I'm going to speed this up a bit, but you go through all these rooms and same thing, you could take out the wizards with your solar. You don't need the mini tool. If you don't have it, not a big deal, but if you do have it, I would suggest having it, especially for those wizards and also for ads, incandescent is phenomenal. So you make your way through all those rooms. You can melee one, go invisible through the whole thing. This is a lot like I told you, like my solar guide or like my duality guide where you're going to be pretty much invisible the entire time. By the way, I left that in. I didn't know why it wasn't working. I was having an issue. When you shoot the cannon and it's not working, you have to shoot it, click, and then hold it after you shoot it. Like shoot it, release, and then hold it immediately so that it'll charge up fully and then explode. By the way, I want to leave this part in. When you're going up the stairs, don't get rocked by the spinning top that comes down because you will die and have to restart. This part, for some reason on the Hunter, I have a lot of issues jumping over this. If you have a sword, you could jump and slash to make it over. I just switched to Stompies. If you have them, just bring them with you. Look at how much easier this is. Just negate the possibility of killing yourself and having to redo all that. It's not worth it. If you have Stompies, bring them with you. If you don't, just use a sword, preferably with Eager Edge, but anyone would work. But if you have it, jump over, slash your sword to make sure you make the jump. Don't take stupid chances and just miss when you could just easily prevent it, okay? So like I said on this, I'm going to speed it up a little bit. By the way, if you feel like this is too fast and you really want to like take in what's going on, you know, if it's going too fast, I did it because I wanted to knock down the time. It was such a long video, but it's a long dungeon and I want to give you every phase and show you exactly how I do it and how you can do it to easily get this clear and pick up the emblems and the triumphs and everything because it's really not hard at all with this build. And if you follow my guide, I guarantee you, you're not going to have a problem to do it. But if you are having a problem and it seems too fast for you, if you just go to the speed, YouTube lets you adjust the speed, turn it down by like 0.25 so go from 1 to like 0.75 and it'll probably even out for you so it might make it a little bit easier but it's up to you if you're if you really want to see that but i slow it down on the parts that really matter i'm just showing you like the phases of getting to damage and then i'll slow you down and show you exactly what the damage phase looks like and how i got there and how i do it to maximize and get as much damage as possible that'll help you out a lot especially taking advantage of that weak and clear and that solo operative, okay? So we're almost about to be a damage phase. I'm just gonna grab these. By the way, when you have burdened by riches, make sure you're always checking for that because I died a few times here and there because I picked up one, didn't realize I did. Timer runs out and you're beat. With this, he normally will put his arms up, but sometimes as you saw, he doesn't. So I just keep tapping my trigger on my mini tool. Once it shows damage, I know I can do a damage phase. I pop that weak and clear, especially with that proximity. I just hit him with that. After I shoot my grenade launcher, I hit my super because my super just sticks in him. And then that'll just keep pulsing and doing more damage. And then basically go to town with the lament. As you can see with lament, and then you have Lucent Blade and you have Weak and Clear on that grenade launcher for the first one. You see this? Look at this. I almost did half the damage in one phase solo. It's that easy. Just rinse and repeat and you will get through it. Here's the thing, guys. This is probably the hardest part. Follow what I do. Now, here's the thing. I'm fairly certain you could do this on any Sparrow. I think it is the easiest on Always on Time. By far one of the best Sparrows in the game. I love this Sparrow so much. You're super fast on it and the enemies kind of avoid you sometimes or most of the time you know those guys try to get me they kind of miss their shots but i do this really easy and i just literally i'll hit a certain path to make sure i get it as far as extenders go there are extenders on this whole thing i don't go for the extenders i made this path and i do it every single time and i never have an issue like i said you can use the extenders or you can you uh, i believe you do this on any sparrow but if you have the always on time especially or any sparrow just try it like, and you follow this path, just hit the bombs. And then I go for this last one right here. This is the only extender. See this extender right here? Don't hit it, just get next to it. As you saw, my timer just extended, mine fuse extended. So you hit that really quick. 
and that's gonna give me a couple extra seconds. And the only reason I hit that last one is to make sure I have the couple extra seconds I need to make it to this next bomb. That's really the only one to have issues with. And then once you get to this part, basically the minefield is done. It's pretty much smooth sailing for the rest of the time. So you're on the third encounter now. Well, technically it's the second encounter for like boss wise or, you know, some, an enemy you have to kill. The rest you're kind of just running through, but we'll call this pretty much the third because you got the first part, which is like running through all the stuff, the maze, you know, getting through the room with the wizards and then get to the ogre. That's really the second part to me or how I consider it. And then this is the third part. I feel you're looking for this boss as you saw or not this boss this servitor that's up there as you saw it had the shield on it you want to get to that once again when you use the cannon you shoot to click to shoot it and then after you shoot it you release and then hold it and then it'll charge up and it will make it explode and it'll give you a charge shot and it'll shoot you in the cannon or shoot you in the teleporter to the next one that's how you're going to want to use that cannon that's also what you're going to need to do for the boss room so for this part all you're gonna do is find each servitor, the one with the white shield that you just saw, and you're gonna try to build up your burden by riches. You wanna get, I believe, around 20 burden by riches. You don't have to do this all at once. You can get as many as you can and then go and deposit them. And you're gonna deposit them in this crystal. Now, as you saw, I ran out there to get that extra one. I already had 20, I didn't need it. Here's the thing though. I've realized that if I leave burdens of riches down, the chances of me picking one up, not realizing and dying and wiping are extremely high. So as you can see what I'm going to do here, just to be on the safe side, you have, you know, when you kill this servitor, you got a while to do it, but your burden by riches, you see, I pick some up. I pick up the rest just to clear them and get rid of them and deposit them. You have over a minute to, to send this to the boss to do damage to it. So I would pick them up and deposit them just to get them off the field and protect yourself. Now, as you saw, that's one full phase, and then you're gonna do that four times, and you're gonna move on to the boss room. This is the final boss. Like I said, I'm only showing one phase of each thing, and then it's just rinse and repeat, that easy. Now, look at this. Right when you come in here, after you rally flag, hit that spot right when those two mini bosses run out with your super. Now, the reason being you waste your super there is because it's not a waste, because you're picking up the orbs, and the engrams on the ground and when you pick up 10 of them it gives you your super back so you will get your super several times in here and then just make sure you have it charged one time for the final boss to give damage to that but you definitely want to use your super a couple times because you have to come um deposit 60 engrams As you see i'm just taking this guy out but i'm gonna speed it up again i'm just going like i said invisible and and the key to this build by the way in case i didn't explain it or you didn't really understand it is you melee and then you dodge and then you melee and then you dodge and the reason is is because when you dodge with gambler's dodge it gives you your melee ability back and when you melee it gives you your dodge ability back but when you melee with a full melee ability it gives you your combination blow and then when you dodge next to somebody and you melee again with your melee charged it'll give you times two and then you do it one more time it'll give you times three now if you melee without doing the dodge you'll still kill him you'll still do a powerful melee you'll still go invisible but your combination blow will not reset to 20 seconds you will lose it in 20 seconds but as you saw right there i was at three or four seconds i dodged next to him meleeed and my combination blow reset to 20 seconds you could pretty much keep your combination blow charged the entire time as long as you hit a melee or a dodge first and then a melee before it runs out, you can do that. So like I said with this cannon, I shot it as you could see and that like I clicked it and I let it go and then I was holding it right after that to charge it. And once it was fully charged, it'll explode on its own. And then these engrams will come out and you wanna collect them. Like I said, when you get 10 engrams, you will get your super. Down here by this water, you will die be careful as you saw how slow i went up to that water i'm kind of used to it too i even went a little faster than you probably should be very careful don't make it all the way to the boss and wipe here i cannot stress this enough do not kill yourself to the water it sucks that it drops down there if you don't want to risk it you can do this again and get a different one but i just walk up very slowly and i pick it up before i hit the water now on this part Okay, on the first one on that side, I showed you where you just pick up 10, that's fine. You know, you can go and deposit those. It actually, every time you shoot one of these, it deposits or it drops 20 engrams. So you can get these very quickly because you get 
20 each time you do that if you can get them if you're fast enough as you see right here i got 10 i ran over here i was able to get 20 so i was fast enough for this one okay but if you're not fast enough just get as many as you can remember what you have so you don't go over by too much you have to sit there and make sure you deposit the burden by riches while you're in boss damage you want to make sure you're at 60 so say for instance you only pick up 13 make sure you only pick up seven to finish or you know if you need 17 make sure you pick up 17 to finish don't get the 20 you know and now here's we go so we're gonna have a boss phase same thing i did i'm gonna step back with my grenade launcher with weak and clear i'm gonna hit him with that and then i'm gonna throw my super at him let that keep pulsing while i go to work with my lament and my loosened blade okay you're gonna do insane damage you're just gonna keep sitting here keep doing this lament just keeps healing you as you go i'm gonna keep going until he says immune once he says immune i'm gonna back out now you could try to be greedy and get another grenade launcher shot. I don't, I just get the one, do as much damage. As you can see, almost half again. This is an easy two to three phase. As you see, I didn't want to risk it. It's an easy three phase. I got him down, it's almost immediate. I did the same thing, grenade launcher, then my staff. It's basically over. I could have sat and hid and he would have died out. So now, as you can see, all of the triumphs popping up. Flawless solo. They're all popping up right here. Complete all encounters. Flawless solo. I know my subscriber bar is in the way. Unfortunately, this was a stream live on YouTube. I did this actually live with a bunch of people and it was actually a lot of fun and everybody got to see it. This was actually for my first YouTube stream. I also stream over on Twitch. If you guys are interested, I do help runs on that all the time. Doing GMs, helping people get conquer seals, doing raids, everything like that. Guys, get this now. This is the season to complete it. Use this build, and I guarantee you, you 100% will clear it. Like I also said, if you're looking to get some GM clears or raid clears, I do help runs all the time live on Twitch. Link in the description. If you're new to the channel and you enjoy this content or I helped you in any way, click that subscribe button, hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on upload. It also really helps me out, guys. I really appreciate if you click that subscribe button. It's completely free, and I promise you won't regret it. I'll catch you guys in the next one.